So, is everyone here? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think so. Yeah. When uh, Shane, when you're live, just let us know. All right, guys, welcome back. Welcome back. We are here with our next Q and A panel with Tyson Hess and Jeff Fowler. Thank you so much, guys, for coming in to take time of your busy schedule to come talk with us. Thanks for having us. Of course, yeah, we're excited to be here. Excellent. It is such. A All righty, so let's be a straight up Q and A. So, if you have a question, please raise your hand or yes. ping us on the tech chat. Uh, we will yes. be glad to answer. And just to note, they cannot answer any spoily questions about Sonic Movie Three. To know, hey, is this character going to appear or is this going to happen? So. They can ask questions. They can answer questions about the first and second movie and all the other things that they worked on that's out, out yet. So, uh, uh, Jeff, Kevin, get out mm, yeah, yeah, uh, Kevin, uh, I'm gonna let you finish up here. But uh, before we get started on the first question, I do, I do want to, uh, you know, get my own little, my, my own little thing out. It's not, a, it's not a question, more rather, I just want to share a quick story with uh, these guys. Yeah, sure. Uh, so I've actually told Tyson this story already, but uh, Jeff. Uh, I actually, uh, first of all, I'm the co-founder of Sonic Revolution. I'm, my name is Sonic Remix, aka Shane Thames. Um, I organize meetups for the movies, uh, every year that, and we actually do them coast to coast. We have one meetup in Orlando, Florida, and then the other meetup is in, uh, Los Angeles. And the first year, uh, the first time we did this, uh, we were hosting our, our meetups in Orlando and Los Angeles. And the Los Angeles meetup happened to be at a theater that you guys happened to show up at that night. And I thought it was so <laughs> hilarious. Yes. And I told Tyson about yes. this. That was a awesome. We had no total idea. Total coincidence. Your Hess was in the crowd. We were just popping in and, and trying to surprise people and just really excited to to engage with the fans. And lo and behold, there in the middle of the theater was Tyson Hess. It was yeah. absolutely miraculous and perfect. I, I had no idea that you guys were coming. I had no idea that you guys were there in the audience <laughs> too. It was, uh, and it's all on video. Someone yeah. videoed it all. It's out there. You can, you can actually see the moment of truth when, when Tyson emerges from the, from the crowd and to, <laughs> to, uh, applause. And, uh, yes, it was, uh, it was a really fun, we always try to, I mean, we'll do that on this movie as well. I'll just try to get out there, you know, on 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 the on premiere night on on that Thursday when uh, feels like the people that are the most excited about the movie are are there and, and seeing it the night before it opens, and just love kind of trying to you know, reward everyone uh, for all their their support by just getting out and, and and seeing everybody and and you know doing doing what we can to say thanks. Yeah, no, nothing beats hearing those screams on those first few opening night showings of just all the big moments like that's the the years leading up to those moments is it's like the payoff for all the all the hard work is like that that's really that's it those 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 yeah. fan screams and those cheers is like that's that's the, what it's all for so that's that's the that's the that's the payment for us wow that was a, a wonderful lining of stars there yeah absolutely uh, before I call out the first audience member, uh, my question to you, Jeff, is what was it like working on the original Shadow game, and how does it feel now that we come full circle with the release of Shadow Generation, or Sonic X Shadow Generation, and we're seeing all these levels and everything come back? It's so crazy. It's like hard to put it into words, because I was so excited just to have a job in the visual effects industry, and, and I found this company... Uh, in Blur Studio, uh, that you know, I, I was my the, the first. I moved out from Chicago, uh, moved to LA and Venice, where, where Blur was located. So it was my first, you know, chance to work in the industry, and and Blur was really doing a lot. Like their kind of bread and butter was doing um, a lot of video game uh, sort of cinematics, and uh, uh, and just quick plug, uh, you guys might have seen that they're doing now. Uh, called Secret Level and it's for Amazon and it's a bunch of, of anthology shorts from video game IPs. Um, but anyways, so yeah, when uh, when Shadow uh, came along, it was just like, it was just, you know, it was such a fun thing to work on. The the, the sequences were so cool. I mean, the that opening one of him on the motorcycle and, and, and just fighting all the gun troops. And it was just, it, we just really were able to take our kind of sensibilities, our, our, our blur kind of action style and apply it to the world of, of, of 
Shadow and Sonic and all that. So then now, you know, that would have been 2004. I think the game came out in 2005. So it's literally been 20 years since I worked on that. And now to be able to put out a movie like this and, and to give Shadow just the ultimate treatment in terms of just the designs and, and the visual effects and just the choreography, the, the fight choreography, the action, the scope. I mean, it's just it's just so great. And, and of course, working with Tyson on all of this and, and, and having his sort of just absolute, the, the two sides of his brain, the sort of the, the artist side uh, that really allows him to help us sort of craft the look of the characters for the movies, but then also uh, the fan side and him knowing kind of really what what are fans going to be the most excited about seeing like, and, and he always is just such a great collaborator and consultant on, on how to, how to bring all these characters to life uh, uh, for the big screen. So, and I just honestly cannot think of a way we could not have created a more exciting or more faithful version of shadow story than what we've got in this third movie. So just really excited for everybody to see it. If I can throw my two cents in there too, it's like I think it, it speaks a lot to the creative process on these movies that uh, I'm allowed to be a part of them in the way that I am. I think a lot of movies uh, that are adapting something so kind of storied and so important to fans, it's easy to be brought in, you know, take material like this, be brought into Hollywood and then just say, oh, you know, we're going to do what we want and just kind of like fans will accept it and we're doing whatever. But on something like this, it is important um, to the people making it that they do care what the fans think and they do uh, allow someone like me to be there and to be sticking my big fan nose into everything and be given my big fat fan opinion on everything. You know, it's like a lot of a lot of other productions would show me the door and say, you know, we don't actually care, but it's, uh, uh, that's not the case at all on these things. They really welcome me in. And when I give my opinion and say, you know, this is, this is a thing that is really important to fans. And I think it's really important that we honor that they, they listen. And I think that's what makes these movies so special. And I think it does make them stand apart from other big Hollywood adaptations is that the people behind the scenes do actually care. You know, there's always going to be, uh paths that diverge from the source material but they they do actually uh take to heart the things that um you know uh, that are important to the fans and they do listen to me as the mouthpiece for you guys and i think that's uh, i think you can see that um, on the screen all right, well, thank you for answering my question i'm going to call up the calvinist cat as our first uh, to ask the first question. All right. Hey, Kat. And you made it. So sorry about that. That's okay. Hey, what's the question? Uh, um, was Sonic 3, like, more emotionally taxing to work on than the previous two? <laughs> That's a great question. Prefer. <laughs> uh, I, I guess I'd say yes, just because uh, uh, obviously the subject matter, you know, like, I mean, I think everyone's very aware of, of Shadow and Maria and how important that that story is. And that was just something we really, really treated like, like just sacred ground. Looks like we have some echo. Can we have some echo? Yeah, uh, Kat. It, I'm you know, sorry about that. Let me, let me mute again. You're fine. Yeah, no worries. Sorry. Um, but yeah, it really, it's so important that we, we, we handled that correctly and that we really sort of got the emotion uh, right. And, and it's just, it's new, it's obviously kind of new territory for, for the films. I mean, tonally, it's, uh, it, it's something that just, just is a little, has a little more weight to it, which is awesome. I love that, that we were able to go there and do that in this third film. I really think it gives this film such a distinct voice and feel, and it really feels like the right evolution from one to two to three. And as Sonic, you know, started off as a very kind of naive kid, and, and as from film to film, he's just growing and maturing and still obviously very much the sort of the, the same fun loving charismatic uh, Sonic that that we we know and love, but but just just putting exposing him to, to stories and characters and, and things that just feel like they're slightly more complex was just very very fun and, and very challenging from a story standpoint. But yeah, absolutely. Like I mean, just 
uh, to take on that kind of uh, material, like the, the shadow and Maria of it all, certainly um, uh, was, was an exciting challenge. But but absolutely, you know, it, it was it was a little heavier uh, at, at times and just trying to figure out how to really uh, thread the needle. Yeah, I'll, I'll say for me, yeah, I mean, I'll say whoops, was an echo there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like for me as a fan, I mean, obviously it is a much more emotional story, but uh, it was um emotionally taxing is the negative way of saying it but i would say it was much more emotionally and in, investing as a fan adapting a story like this just because you know sonic has obviously been my favorite thing in the world ever since i was old enough to have favorite things and this is the probably the biggest like like pivotal thing in the history of sonic you know like i'm i'm uh unleashed stan number one of course but there's not a game bigger than sonic adventure 2 right it's just like probably the most important game in the canon it's just uh, uh the introduction of shadow it's just the biggest tone shift in the whole series it's like it's it's harder to it's hard to pick a more important singular game in the franchise really so when it comes to adapting it as a fan, uh, every little change that happens and every little um, bit of adaptation that happens, like as a as a fan, um, trying to get it just right is, uh, yeah, it, it really, really, it, it the importance of that really weighs on on me. So um, it was, uh, yeah, it was not again like not hard because that paints it in a negative light but it was just it was a very very emotionally heavy couple of years as i worked with this group of people that you know that are all like god everyone on these movies is, is so talented and just like working with everyone to to bring to life you know what was one of my favorite things on the entire planet to what is going to be a whole new audience of experiencing like what has been one of my favorite things in my entire life. It's, it's emotional on a level that I never thought I would experience. So um, on top of being, yes, an obviously a much more emotional movie than the past two movies uh, from a personal level, it was an incredibly emotional experience for me. Um, but uh, I, I could not imagine having done this with any other crew. Like it's a, uh, uh, hopefully, again, hopefully it really just shows up on the screen that it was done with care. All righty, so thank you for that question, uh, Calvin and Scott. So, Crystal, would you like to read a tech question or call us the next audience member? Sure thing. Uh, first things first, though, I didn't have a, uh, I didn't get to introduce myself. Hi, my name is Crystal. Pleasure to have you, Mr. Tyson and Mr. Fowler. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Alrighty then, let's choose the next person, shall we? And I believe I will pick Hanny. Hi there. Hi. Uh, okay, I'm I'm very nervous. I'm so sorry, but uh, okay. no reason uh, to be nervous. Welcome. This this is a question kind of um, directed to for Mr. Fowler. Um. What were the specific scenes that you actually animate on the Shadow of the Hedgehog 2005 game? I keep seeing a lot of like people throw around that you were like part of the opening cutscene, but I'm not really sure. So, yeah, it was mainly the cutscene stuff. And back in those days at Blur, we kind of we did a little bit of everything, like layout, which is sort of blocking the action and 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 have, putting the cameras in there before you hand it off to the animators to, I was prim primarily a character animator, um, but stuff like shadow on the bike uh, uh, and, and then, you know, flipping up into the air and coming down with his little uh, submachine gun, which uh, <laughs> was, was very uh, awesome uh, and fun. Um, and then some stuff when Black Doom is like uh, floating next to him and talking and in and, and some of the later scenes, uh, cinematics where they're a little bit more story driven. Um, but the uh, but the big exciting, um, you know, sort of open the with uh, the action on the streets. Um, I didn't work on any of the corridor stuff where the the gun soldiers run up and 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 take aim at Maria and all that. But mm -hmm. um, but that was all blur. So we, yeah, it's again, it's just so crazy to me that that um, that 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 all was twenty years ago, and 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 here we are, you know, about to 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 finish the movie version. Yeah, full circle moment. Thank you so much for answering my question. I really wanted yeah, to know course. about that. <laughs> yeah, that was a great question. 
Thank you so much, Henny. All right, so I'll read a text question. This is an interesting one for, for Victor McKnight. So to Jeff and Tyson, I've written a few songs inspired by your movies now. This is it's kind of a bloated, bloated question, but would you have any advice for people such as myself looking to get their foot in the door for music plus sync licensing? I feel like Tyson is much more music-minded than I am. I will, I will <laughs> let him feel this one. I actually, uh, I mean, I, I met Victor at uh, Revolution last year. Um, and I mean, yeah, Victor's a very talented and driven young man. And I think uh, the advice that I gave you there still holds true. It's just, uh, as with any industry, networking is everything. You know, it's um, meeting people. Uh, you can never overvalue the handshake factor. It's like, just like... Uh, locking eyes with someone, shaking their hand, and like just getting that vibe check from someone is is everything. Uh, it's it's why there are hubs for every industry, be it animation, film, music. It's like people tend to congregate in certain areas um, because uh, you just like you you can't yeah you can't overvalue the um, uh, that 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 feeling you get when you meet someone and you think, oh yeah, I like this person. I want to work with them. Um, so just, you know, meet as many people as you can sh show your stuff to as many people as you can. And, you know, it's like, you may think it's silly, but there's always like people on the street handing their CDs out to people. Like, it seems like a, a scam sometimes, but you'd be surprised like uh, how many um, like, just like ears, uh, like the value of just getting your music in as many years as possible, showing your stuff on Twitter. Uh, I have absolutely found people by just um, finding their sound clouds and being like, you know what? I like that sound. Um, I'm friends with uh, the creator of a show, Invader Zim. Um, he, he finds uh, musicians to work with all the time by just, uh, you know clicking around on spotify and it's like man i really like this sound and then he emails someone and be like hey i want to work with you like that's that's kind of how it happens it's it's all about just making sure you're visible um just make make yourself easy to find that's that's the short version of what i guess i'm trying to say yeah the only only thing i would add and just is has nothing specifically related to music but just this applies to any discipline is really just just keep going like it's it's always going to take longer than you ever thought it would but you just have to stay in it and, and keep working hard and keep believing that that anything can happen because it absolutely can i mean i i i there was probably about a 10 year gap in between when i thought something should happen for me and, and then when something really did kind of click but i was happy like i was i was doing my art i was animating i was working on cool projects it wasn't kind of at the level that i thought i might i should have been at you know at, at a certain point but i enjoyed what i was doing I, I i just didn't you know i tried to keep my little my little candle burning uh, however i could if there, if i wasn't maybe that sort of excited about whatever i was working on uh, on one particular week I, I would try and come home and just have some little personal project or a, little, a script or just something that i would i would just use to to really keep that little creative candle you know burning brightly and, and i think it's just it's just really hard no matter what you're trying to do no matter what your field is it's it's just takes it to, it's a timing thing it's a there's a I don't want to say there's luck because that that kind of is, is too dismissive, but, you know, it kind of takes a lot of things coming together at the right time. So the most the best thing you can do is just be ready when that when that moment comes and, and just really feel like you've you've refined your talent. You've created a portfolio of, of work you're proud of and excited about. And then when that oppor opportunity comes along, then then you can really, you know, prove that that you deserve that shot. Alrighty, so thank you for that question, Victor. Uh, Crystal, I'll let you uh, pick the next person or read a text question. Sure, yeah, I'll read a text question, and this is from Miyato, and excuse me if I mispronounced that. Uh, his question is, or their question is, how long did it, and this is for Jeff Fowler, how long did it take you to finish production for the first movie installment of Sonic the Hedgehog back in 2020? Uh, you know, like, uh, I mean, I guess it just depends on when, when you really kind of classify. I mean, I, I first got involved with the development of the script in it was, it was probably July of uh, 2016. That was at Sony at the time. And so we were, we were there for about 
a little less than a year. We were, we were doing outlines, um, and, and then we produced a, a first draft. Um, but then at that point, uh, at Sony uh, and Sega, we're just, just not uh just weren't really ready to move forward to uh, together uh on the film so sega decided they wanted to to you know find a new partner um that just did that sony and sega did not have didn't see eye to eye on the on the next steps and so that's how paramount kind of came into the into the uh, conversation and so they uh were great partners and we continued working on the, the draft and then began filming in summer of 2018. It was like, uh, actually remember it was my 40th birthday, um, which was uh, late July of 2018. That's, that's when we, when we started filming. And, uh, then, uh, uh, that movie came out in February of, uh, of 2020. So yeah, um, the, the cycle of these things is usually about two, two years. Um, in this case, with Sonic Three, we we squeezed in the Knuckles series, so uh, from this one it ended up being about two and a half years. But that's because we were uh, we were working on another thing. So um, if we can get a movie done in in, in two years uh, from script to screen, that 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 feels feels pretty good. That in a nutshell, though, I'm pretty sure a lot of things happened in between that time. <laughs> oh yeah, that all kinds of stuff, <laughs> but. Usually, you know, usually good, but sometimes you have actor strikes or writer strikes or pandemics or, you know, it, it's what it's what keeps it interesting. Pandemics, yeah, normal things. Alrighty then, so who has to pick now? Uh, Kevin, uh, or is it? Yep, yep. Uh, well, Pep, I'll go towards the middle. Uh, I think it's called the Joyful Songbird. I hope I'm reading that right. Oh, hello again. Hi. Yes, uh, you said it right. <laughs> Okay. So, so um hello thank you so much for coming here i appreciate that you're answering the questions uh, for the fans thank you sure yeah welcome nice to meet you um so i have a combined question is for both tyson and and fowler if mm -hmm. that's okay so mm -hmm. um i i want to ask so during the the movie the sonic movie you kind of had um, a part, like Tyson helped with the design of Sonic, if that's correct, and um, and Fowler was once in the in the movie. No, he directed the movie, and mm -hmm. I heard that you had a past in helping with the Shadow the Hedgehog game, if that's correct. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. So then, yeah. So then, then, um, how was it like when you were um, working onto the to the um to the movie like as as um since that the movie has a big part and it's it's very special to the sonic fans how was it like was it a bit um kind of tricky to make sure that that the movie is going to be good and that the fans were liking it especially on the sonic 3 movie since it has shadow um was it kind of easy since that you had this kind of knowledge of shadow when creating the movie and you guys both had a, a role in in a big part of it together when creating that movie for the Sonic 3? I hope that my question wasn't confusing. Yeah, 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 it makes sense. No, absolutely. I mean, Tyson wears many hats on these films, but the, certainly the one that I probably uh, value the most is just he, he's sort of our, our our story supervisor and storyboard supervisor and manages the story team. But, you know, it just it, it is, a, it is a great uh, mind for, for these characters and the stories and, and how to just plot uh, really compelling um, uh, adventures and stories and all that. So, so him and I are kind of like sort of you know some of the first ones in after we have uh, a, a draft of the script that, that that we're all feeling good about. And then uh, it's these these things. Uh, sure, they're live action, but but really, and I think this third movie is a perfect example. They're just becoming more and more animated. Uh, I mean, obviously, it's a photorealistic style of animation, but with all these new characters. Uh, that we every film the cast grows the CG characters sort of the cast grows and grows and so Tyson and I uh, always just really love jumping in and starting to make these things visual and uh, making the leap from the script to storyboard animatics and starting to build the movie out uh, on on paper so to speak and and at, at these last two films we've basically had watchable versions of, of the film that that are, are just entirely storyboarded the way you would as if it was an animated film because it really helps 
the crew um, when we go out to shoot to show them an animated sequence, uh, you know, storyboard animatic that has temp temporary sound design and, and music and all that, and just help everyone understand like what's cool about this scene or what's exciting or what's emotional or you know just what is it and and, and so. We, uh, we always um, get going on that very, very early. It also really helps define kind of the tone of the films. If you can kind of sort of identify what are those key sequences, what's really going to sort of put us on the path um, to tell the best version of the story uh, usually is identifying like, and oftentimes it's like a combination. It's like, it's a big action sequence. Like on this film, uh, I think one of the first ones that, that Tyson and I uh, kicked off with the boarding team was was this uh, Tokyo battle. You know, when Sonic and Shadow first meet, we knew we, we needed to do just a really awesome action sequence. And so uh, and we knew Tokyo would be a really amazing backdrop for that. So that that was one of the first things we kind of set down to design. Um, but yeah, it really helps having um, this sort of history with the characters. I mean, the history with Shadow. Uh, uh, it, it just it just informs a lot of our decisions. So, but I'll let I'll let Tyson speak to some of that stuff as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I think one of the things that works really well about our our team and, and our process is that Jeff has a history with animation. He understands the process. Um, he has he understands the value of storyboarding. Um, these are live action movies, but they're also animated movies, and um, there are um a lot of live action movies that have very very little storyboarding it's it's very easy to just leap into filming and then kind of figure things out later but um for for movie three we basically storyboarded the entire thing and it was really really helpful and i think it, it ended up making movie three the the tightest one yet because we were able to figure out so much ahead of time um you'd, you'd be surprised really i think a lot of people that are not familiar with the process think that you you get a script and then you just film that script and then that's the movie and, and it just kind of is a linear process but uh you'd be surprised how much needs to change from the page to the screen once you really capture things on film uh it's just a, a lot actually needs figuring out once things become visual and so <clears throat> taking that script turning it into storyboards, turning it into animatics uh, really reveals a lot of changes that need to happen. It, it reveals a lot of uh, changes in like jokes, you know, that need to change things that are funny on the page suddenly stop being, uh, you know, the, the jokes need uh, adjusting because you realize that timing changes things about the humor or it changes things about uh, a jump scare. It changes, it just changes everything. And so, um, having uh you know a director that is uh, experienced with animation and then understands the value of turning the the script into a fully storyboarded uh animatic it, it it makes for a much much stronger end result and so i think that's uh it, it what made these movies so um so successful in the end and, and again this is the first one that we have really storyboarded the entire thing from front to end. And so I think that's why this is, uh, in my opinion, the strongest one yet. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think it's great. Yeah. Thank you so much for answering that. You know, like after hearing this, it really just makes me appreciate more the effort, even more so than before about the effort that you guys done, especially for the movie. And I can't wait to see how, how it goes. And I think, um, everybody in, who worked on it did a fantastic is going to do a fantastic job. But thank you so much for answering that. Thank you. Oh, thank that's you. very kind of you. Thank you for the kind words. Thank you. Thank you have you. a great day, all thank of you. you. Thank you. All righty, so thank you for that question. I had a really interesting tech question from Dino Kaiju. Was it difficult to find the right voice actors for the characters, especially for Sonic, Knuckles, and Shadow before ultimately choosing Ben Schwartz? Uh, Idris, uh, I'm so sorry if I butchered that name, and Canal Reeves? <laughs> uh, well, I, I think the hardest, uh, which probably comes as no surprise, was Sonic, of course, mm -hmm. because, I mean, he's the foundation of it all. I think uh, it, it was unique in a sense of, like, what, what we were trying to do with the character, with the film, and and have him be, like, have this really fun, manic energy 
but but be funny, you know, and 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 be be able to be emotional when we needed emotion, uh, uh, be able to be you know energetic and kid like, but but most importantly, just be something that we could do really great animation to. I mean, it's like there's lots of great actors, but not all actors have great voices for animation, and so th that's really the trick is uh, is finding somebody who uh, is a good fit for what what we know the we need to do when, when it comes down to and, and a lot of that. I feel like I, I, at least my experience as a character animator kind of came into that because it was like, it was certainly a pretty significant conversation with the studio about casting and, and who would be right. And, uh, but everyone had a different opinion. And so the thing that I kept coming back to, or at least the point I kept trying to emphasize is, look, it's gotta be somebody whose voice gives us something that an animator can sit down and really know what to do with it, that the cues are all there, that the, the personality, the, you know, it, it will, will set us up for success when it comes time to actually create animation from it. And, uh, it's one of those things. It's like, it, 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 it kind of like, uh, it was just a process, but we couldn't have been more fortunate. And, and it really, uh, is kind of, a uh, uh, almost just, uh, fate kind of intervened with Ben because, I mean, I've told this story before, but Ben was there to meet my, uh, to meet Tim Miller, who was, was my boss at Blur. And I, I sat next to him, uh, at the studio and Tim was, was casting for the very first season of Love, Death and Robots, which is the anthology uh, animated series that has run on Netflix for a couple of seasons. So his short, um, was a live action hybrid, the only one, everything else was animated. So he needed, he was casting, he needed an actor. So Ben was coming by to meet Tim and Tim was in another meeting. So Ben was just kind of hanging out waiting for, for Tim to walk up back to his desk. And Ben noticed I had all this Sonic stuff on, on my desk and, and, and was like, Oh, uh, you know, he just w was a huge fan of Sonic and asked me what, why I had all of it. And I was like, well, I'm, I'm developing a film, uh, uh, based off Sonic. And, uh, that's, this is way back when it was still at Sony. And, and he thought that was awesome and he was really excited about it. And, uh, so ultimately he wasn't able, the schedule, the scheduling didn't work out. So he wasn't able to be in Tim's short, but, um, it just, it, it, it he just, it stuck. His name stuck, uh, in, in my head. And when it came time to start figuring out how to cast Sonic, it was just, it was, it, Ben was just perfect. I mean, he's just so funny. He's got a great voice, uh, that, that is perfect for animation. Uh, and so it, it really, it's just like one of those moments where it just kind of like everything worked out the way it was supposed to. And, and it's just, he just happened to be, you know, the right place at the right time and, and, and all of that. So, uh, whatever, whatever twist of fate delivered him to, to, uh, to my desk on that day, I'm very, very thankful for. <laughs> Alrighty. So thank you for that question, Dino Kaiju. Uh, Crystal, I'll let you either read the next que or tech question or call up the next person. Sure thing. I'll bring someone up and I'm choosing Rockstar 75. Once again, my heart skipped a beat once my when I heard my name being called. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Anyway, hello, 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 nice to meet you. And uh, Tyson, it's nice to see you again, even though you may not recognize me, but I did see you at Sonic Rebel in person this year. I do believe I recognize your voice, even though I, I can't see your face, but it's good to hear you again. That's surprising. Yeah. And it's, it's big. And uh, speaking of which, I actually, I, do, I actually have a question for you, Tyson. Um, yeah. How was it like redesign, uh, redesigning, redesigning Sonic for the first movie, saving us from the original design that Sega gave us? <laughs> uh, I mean, it was. It, it's funny. It, it's it's almost a blur in my memory now. It uh, it really happened so fast. You'd be surprised. Um, I was, I was called in the day after that first trailer dropped. Um, and I came in and I watched the movie and then I came back the next day and I met Jeff and the producers and everyone. And we really quickly kind of workshopped some design ideas. Um, and surprisingly, I actually, uh, just because I, I didn't know that delaying the movie was a possibility, I, I kind of gave some softball design ideas. I was, I was just thinking like, uh, okay, um, in an emergency situation, what can we do here? Can we just make the eyes bigger? Maybe like make sure we give him his gloves, uh, you know, get, make sure his arms and legs are a, a little bit more cartoony. Like I was, 
I was really thinking like, what can we just like, what's the bare minimum we can do uh, just to, to get them into a little bit more of an appealing uh, territory and uh, everyone else in the room, you know, Jeff and all the producers was like, no, like we gotta, we gotta, like the, the term thrown around was move the needle, you know? <laughs> so like, it, it was really, it was on them uh, to really push to, to go further um, enough to make sure that everyone was really happy. So uh, with their um, insistence, I, I said, "Okay, well, um, I'll uh, I, I'll go as far as we can." With the the biggest thing about the redesign, though, was that you know the movie was already shot. Um, so something that was really important was that everyone uh, had all the the live action characters were already looking where they needed to be looking in, in the 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 plate or or what's called the uh, you know the, the live action footage. So when Tom or James is in the car with Sonic, he's looking in uh, specifically where the original Sonic design was already looking. So wh whatever we did with the redesign, Sonic's eyes needed to be exactly where old Sonic's eyes were. So that actually informed a lot about what this new design had to be. Um, you kind of had to start with the eyes. So the eyes could only get so much bigger. They could only, they had to be in the exact same spot on the head. And then everything else from there kind of had to be designed around that. So it was a little limiting in what we could actually do regarding the design, but it still allowed us to change a significant amount um, from the design from there. And then with that, you know, I worked with the rest of the VFX team who are very talented creature uh, designers and they, they helped me um, with translating a very cartoony design into what is a real creature, you know, all the things that we need to be mindful of regarding like how an eyelid needs to deform, which is a very, very important thing with the design and why we, you know, we tested some things with a single eyeball and why it couldn't really work out just because of um, the eyelids were really the, the biggest problem there is uh, with uh, the regular cartoon game version of Sonic, his eyelids kind of work like a window blind or a shutter that slides up and down an eyeball and they kind of need to disappear into his head. And with a real creature, you can't you can't do that because then the eyelid just needs to disappear behind something, and that doesn't really work with a real creature. So we needed to give them real eyelids, and the only way you can do that is to separate the eyeballs. And this is just a lot of things that I I learned on the fly. You know, I had never worked in VFX in my life before so it was, it was a complete learning experience for me um which i'm extremely grateful for because i learned a lot about uh a, a lot more about painting i learned a lot more about um physiology a lot more about physics and creature design um a lot more about the vfx as an industry um it was it was an, like one of the most educational times of my life um and i'm extremely grateful for it uh but yeah it was it was an incredibly collaborative experience, um, is, I, is I think the headline there. So, uh, yeah, but again, it was a blur. It, it really just happened so fast, so. Huh, so it turns out redesigning Sonic wasn't, wasn't, what, 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 uh, wasn't as easy, wasn't as easy as it, as it looks, huh? Oh, it, uh, easy isn't even in the conversation. <laughs> it was, it was <laughs> hundreds of paintings and paint overs and again, incredibly collaborative. Uh, I, had to, I had to fly to London and then I had to fly to Vancouver to work with several different teams, um, uh, working with our, our modeler, Alan, who's an incredibly talented guy as well. Um, you know, it was, uh, it was, yeah, I mean, it was incredible. But uh, again, there was so much riding on the line. I think these, these movies, and people have said it before, these movies are pretty directly responsible for uh, the the renaissance that sonic is going through right now you know they really brought sonic back into the social consciousness in a way that uh he needed you know people are paying more attention to the games in a way that they weren't for a while um it's it's given sega a lot more incentive to give their all into making great games and i mean even the youtube shorts are getting more funding and budgeting to give stuff like dark beginnings now you know all because of the movies so there was a lot riding on making sure sonic looked as good as he needed to because it's such an important part of him you know he's got to look good so it was uh there's a lot of pressure but uh, i think i think we we did the best we could safe to say that all that all that all that pressure was worth it because because thanks to you and and and, the, and those people, y'all saved the movie franchise, and we can't thank you enough for that. 
Well, thank you. All right. I think that answers my question. Thank you so much for having me and take care to the both of you. Thank you very much. Thanks. All right. So thank you for that question, Rockstar. I'll read the next text question to Jeff and Tyson. What inspired you both on your career to where you are now? Mm. Jeff, you want to go first? Uh, how much time do we have? Uh, it's <laughs> about it's 20 like, minutes. About yeah, 20 yeah minutes no, I, <laughs> I will not take 20 minutes to answer, but I could. Um, you know, it's just, it's, it's a bunch of things. It's like, Certainly, it all started with just with movies. I mean, Star Wars was probably the thing that I mean, it came out in 77. I was born in 78. And I probably saw it for the first time when I was maybe four years old. Uh, just absolutely was obsessed with with all of it. I mean, the, the visual effects, the the story, like just movies in general. Uh, uh, it, it just that's really what made me just fall in love with the magic of movies and, and visual effects as a storytelling tool. Uh, and, and then I just just would just watch everything I could. But then I also got into video games. I had a, a ColecoVision in the early 80s, and, and then that turned into Nintendo, the NES, and then that turned into the Genesis and Super Nintendo and, and you know, Dreamcast and, and just on and on and on. And it just was uh, kind of everything all kind of going into the pot, uh, just sort of of what I wanted to do with, with, with my life. And I... Uh, in computer animation, it really sort of was the was just kind of everything I loved uh, all in one because it was like I loved art, uh, I loved um, animated uh, you know animation, animated films, and then uh, and and now the the and then technology like I just was really interested always was interested in, in computers and, and felt like I had a technical side uh, that that just was was all came together when uh when like toy story and jurassic park and all that in the mid 90s uh when when computer uh driven you know visual effects just really became the the uh, the, the future the obvious future of filmmaking and so that that's why i went to art school was to learn how to be a character animator and a computer animator and uh and then that just led me out to uh to la to just to pursue my dream of of just working on movies and uh, and so these Sonic films just really just represent everything that, that, that I love about, about movies and, and, and games and, and all of it. It's just getting to, to work on the biggest stage and tell the biggest stories with characters that, that I absolutely love. So it's it really uh, it, it's very cheesy, but it's just a, a dream come true. Yeah, uh, for me, I hate, to give, <laughs> I hate to give the answer that everyone already knows, but sonic you know uh i just for whatever reason um saw sonic on the tv uh and then i rented a genesis like for for kids that are too young to remember this there's a place called blockbuster video um we were we were not uh <laughs> fortunate enough to have enough money to buy a genesis um or a console so we would go to Blockbuster. You could rent a Genesis and a game. Uh, we saw a commercial for Sonic, so we went to Blockbuster, rented a Genesis and Sonic 1, and then that was just kind of it for me. I just started drawing Sonic nonstop. Um, and then, uh, you know, little by little, uh, just like uh, this just became my obsession. Started watching Sat AM, started just getting into animation in general, like Lion King came out, and then from, from then on, it was just like, I want to be an animator. And then uh, it just, that was it. So here I am. All righty. So thank you for that question there. Uh, so, Crystal, I'll let you either read the next question or text question or call up the next audience member. Sure. Um, I do have a text question, but I also see that they're raising their hand here. So let's invite Kenny. Can you hear me, guys? There we go. Yeah. Oh, perfect. <laughs> Hi, Mr. Fuller and Tyson. Nice to see you again here in Revo. <laughs> Please call me Jeff. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> thank you. Uh, uh, if that's okay, I have a question for both of you. So mm -hmm. for Tyson, uh, I have one that is, what is something that you made for Sega that has stuck out the most? Huge fan of your work. Stop. And... Uh, yeah. oh, Sure. Oh, Go ahead and ask your question for Jeff, too. Oh, of course. And for you, Jeff, uh, also a huge fan of your work and what you did in Shadow the Hedgehog of 2005. 
So for my question is, what will be the best advice for aspiring new artists and producers like to have a chance in the industry? What would you provide as an advance, as an advice? Sure. Uh, Tyson, you want to answer yours first? Uh, it might be pretty quick. I think my favorite thing that I've done with Sega was the Extra Little Mania Adventures episode. It was the Christmas special with Amy uh, Rose and Metal Sonic. Um, I think Amy is is a character that um, has had uh, a bit of a tumultuous couple of years where um, she's she's felt a little not lost, but um, her her place in the cast is a little ill defined right now, and. Um, I think we're all just kind of looking exactly for for what she needs to be and and who she needs to be in regard to everyone else. And so in that episode, I just I really wanted to highlight who who she is to me as a character and why she's so special. And, and to me, Amy Rose is uh, you know, she's not um, she's not just one of the boys. She's not just a pink Sonic or anything like that. She is, um, she's just kind of a normal person. You know, she gets wrapped up in these big adventures. And uh, despite everyone else having these superpowers, she, um, she rises to the occasion. Um, she helps the people that normally would get left behind, you know, in Sonic Adventure, for example. Um, she's the one that helps the little bird that Sonic says is not really worth his time, you know, in Sonic Adventure 2, she's the one that everyone keeps leaving behind, and then, uh, every, you know, everyone kind of thinks Amy is not really gonna, uh, be the key to saving the day, and then, of course, she is the one that's the key to saving the day, um, and so for this little special, it's like, you know, she's the one that picks Metal up from the dirt and brings him home um, because, you know, nobody else would bother. And, and so uh, that's, that's why I think she's such a special character. And um, to be able to do that little episode uh, was, uh, it was special for me because, um, yeah, I just think Amy is, is a special little character. I think she's unique amongst the cast and I'm, I'm glad they, they let me do that with her. So that was, that was my favorite thing I think I've done with Sega. Awesome. Um, it, advice. Uh, I don't know if you heard my answer uh, from from a little earlier, but it, it it'll be a similar kind of kind of response. I mean, I think the thing that just uh, it just the simplest version is just you just got to keep working, got to keep your head up, got to believe that that anything is possible, and just keep you know just keep going. It, it's just. I mean, I, I was very fortunate to have someone in, in Tim Miller who eventually went on to direct Deadpool, but he hired me and I and became a very important person in my career. He was a mentor and a friend. And uh, he, you know, when I, when I got to Blur, I was like in my early 20s. And he was like, I think probably late 30s, early 40s. So there's about a, about a 20-ish, uh, well, not 20 years. I think probably more like 12, about 12 years between us. But anyways, and and he, and we were both kind of trying to to get, sort of get to the same place. We both, you know, really loved movies, loved animation. Really, were trying to just break into into movie making, like into feature films, and uh, which was just is just a really hard thing to do. And whenever I would start to feel a little bad about just it not having happened yet for for myself, or feeling like somehow I was falling short. I would look at him and, and he never, he was never slowing down. He was never, you know, like spending time just feeling sorry for himself or like he just kept going and it would really help motivate me to just not, you know, wallow in sort of like, oh, it's never going to happen or I'm not good enough or like I, I would just look at him and, and, and think, man, he's been doing it twice as long as I have and, and he's still going for it and he's still pushing as hard as he is, then, then I'm going to, then I'm going to go too. And, I, and I'm going to, so he very much inspired me to, to just, cause it is, it's really hard. And I don't mean that to, to make anyone feel like, uh, you know, not, that's not meant to sort of, uh, uninspire that if anything, it's meant 
to to inspire because you just you just have to know that that there's it, it, you know it's a really hard thing to do but it's so worth it and, and it, you just really uh, uh, you just have to believe it believe that that anything is possible I mean I'm a I'm a kid from the Midwest my dad sold insurance for 40 years and like here I am you know getting to to make movies with guys like Tyson and Jim Carrey and I just if you if you had told me that back when I was a kid, like I probably would have thought you were crazy. But like, you know, anything can happen and you just got to believe, but you got to work hard. There's no substitute for hard work. Like that's probably 90 percent of what it takes to, to get there is is the hard work. The other parts are probably a little bit more out of your control, but but you can control how hard you work. Uh, and, and then just keeping a positive attitude, you know, and just being a good person, be kind, like just, uh, uh, just, you know, help other people when they ask and, 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 and don't look at other people as, as competitors, just look, look at places to collaborate and network as Tyson said earlier, because you just never know, you never know what it, that, that small gesture or that collaboration or that nice thing you did professionally for somebody else, how it might come back to you in a big way. So it really is just, uh, you know, just, just keep pushing hard and, and, and hopefully you, you love what you do. So it doesn't feel like work. I mean, that's, I, I feel that way. I feel like even when I was working late hours at Blur or would be there all night, uh, many nights in a row to deliver a project. I also just felt really fortunate that I got to do the thing I loved. Uh, and so it made, you know, certainly never, never made it feel like just work. So hopefully you, you feel the same way about whatever it is that, that you're trying to do, because I think that's, that's a huge part of it as well. Awesome. Oh, thank you so much for the big advice. Like, wow, <laughs> I'm taking yeah, that to, to the heart very much. And yeah, that motivates me to do great things in the future. <laughs> that's great. Well, you, you can get there. Just just keep going. But but it, it's a great question. And, and, and I hope it helps. Thank you so much, Jeff and Tyson, for your time and for answering my questions. Thank, thank you. you. All righty, so I think we have time for one more question. So uh, this is from Maedo. Here's my question for Jeff Bowers. I'm, I'm a huge fan of the Sonic movies. How long did it take you to finish production for the first movie installment of Sonic the Hedgehog back in 2020? Uh, Kevin, I, I think I, I've already I think I asked that one earlier. Yeah, that was already asked mm -hmm. earlier, Kevin. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. I'll, I'll read another one. Uh, um, uh, what is the biggest challenge of making good progress of animating the characters of the Sonic movie franchise? Uh, this is from Rain Wolf Duck. Mm -hmm. Of making good progress. What was the What was the question? Yeah, I think it was the a great uh, making. What is the making progress making? And okay, here yeah. we go. Uh, what is the biggest challenge of making good progress of animating the characters of the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise movie? I think I think I have all the answer for this one. Go for it. Uh, I think as probably everyone listening knows that has tried to draw Sonic, um, that Sonic seems like a really simple character, but uh, to draw, but it is really easy to get him wrong. I mean, this is a. <clears throat> I'm I'm going to say things that everyone's probably going to laugh at and. and uh, Jeff, these are all like buzzwords that uh, you're probably very lucky to never have heard. But things like muzzle curve and quill length, you know, these are things that this community has uh, daily arguments about. You know, it seems like really, really small things, but it really uh, it changes a lot about how uh, appealing this character is. Um, that these are uh, this is a character that is so simple that the smallest change will affect how appealing he is you know so i think the most um difficult thing uh in regard to making progress on animating this character is that on a production this large you're dealing with dozens and dozens of new animators um all the time and so you're you're constantly having to teach them how to make this character look appealing and on model uh, and I think for people that don't do 3D animation, it's really easy to think that, oh, uh, it's a 3D model. It's always on model because it's it's 3D, but that's actually not the case. It's actually really easy to make a 3D model go off model. Um, 
you uh, you you have all these controllers that if you move them just in the just the wrong way, um, suddenly it stops looking like Sonic. It's really really easy to get a 3D model to stop looking like he's supposed to look. Um, and so uh, we have uh, a really great um, animation supervisor. His name is Clem, um, and he does a great job of, of helping everybody uh, get there to the finish line. But um, you, uh, yeah, you you have a huge team of animators, and and just like a, a 2D um, cartoonist, everyone has their unique way of drawing. Everyone in, uh, in as a 3D animator has their own unique way of animating and, and uh, sculpting a 3D character. So you're constantly having to teach them how to make him look like he's supposed to look. So I think that's probably the most difficult part. Um, but I, in my opinion, I think movie three has uh, really got the best overall uh, look for, for all these characters. I think we really, really nailed it. And I think um, it's, it's got probably the best character animation um, from any of them. I'm like, I'm, I'm blown away just looking at, at some of our stuff. I, I think he's like all these characters just look the best they've ever looked, and I, I, yeah, I really, I can't wait for people to see them because um, they just they look so good. So yeah, all righty. So thank you for uh, that question, oh, Shane. Do we have time to squeeze in one more question? Oh yeah, uh, I allowed time for overrun so. Okay, so uh, I, uh, I got four minutes. I do actually have to go d right into uh, uh, a movie related meeting. So uh, I, I can, if you, get, uh, 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 if you guys got That's one perfect. more, four I'm minutes. Yeah, yeah, so Crystal, I'll, I'll let you read a tech question or call up somebody. All right. Um, yeah, actually, you know what? Uh, yeah, we do have a question here. Hello, Mr. Tyler, huge fan of your work with the Sonic movies. Uh, as far as for my question, what would be your best advice for aspiring artists and producers to have an opportunity for the industry? Well, real quick, do we have one for Jeff? Is there one on the list for Jeff? That one's the one for Jeff. I think we, didn't we just, didn't, is that not just asked? We kind of just uh, did one like that for, from Jeff. Yeah, the advice, uh, advice yeah. one. I'm so sorry. Um, it looks like, okay, yeah, yeah. In case, uh, let's see. Well, this well, it's a spoiler one. Sorry. Um, <laughs> mm, again, spoiler. Mo most of the questions here. Yeah. Had well, well, yeah. Just, yeah. Let's, okay. Just, no, no. Go ahead. Ask it, and it, I'll just right. give a really false answer. <laughs> <laughs> How did you bring Shadow into the movie? His backstory and his personality, his character, basically into this the Sonic movie verse. How about I just say uh, it's so awesome that we got Keanu Reeves to to voice the character, and he was so fantastic to work with. Uh, I think he thinks the character is awesome. I think he definitely understood what we were going for and, and was very excited to kind of you know do his version of it. But he like like all the cast just really wants to get it right, really cares. I mean, we would be, uh, you know, he would just give us so many different versions of line readings and and just want to keep going. Like it was. Uh, it by you know, it was not just sort of showing up and, and and reading the script into a microphone like he really wanted to create uh, a very fan sort of faithful version of the character he did research like he really like in our first meeting he very clearly had gone and, and and done his homework which was awesome you know and and so uh no i just can't say enough wonderful things about keanu and what he brought to the to the character and just the experience of of making this movie so i i just think people are gonna you know, really, really love um, uh, his version of, of Shadow. It's uh, it's awesome. Uh, All right, thank you, right. thank you so much, Shadow Ryan. Fan, I am. A, I cannot wait to hear his version. Yeah, I think you'll yeah, really love it. Uh, yeah, I really think like once you, once you hear the, him in the whole movie, he really he really brings it. Well, we look forward to it. Is there anything you two would like to say before we close out this Q and A? Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, great questions. Uh, I, I mean, you guys are like, you know, the, the most important. I mean, the fans are, are the absolute heart and soul of, of, of Sonic and, and the reason he uh, why we get to make these movies. And so thank you for your for your fandom and your support. And, uh, uh, you know, obviously, we're so excited for you to see this this third film. We've we've done everything we can to hopefully give you guys the best version, the best movie version of uh, of these characters and, and, you know, stories that you love. Yeah, and I guess I'll say, you know, a, again, as a fan, it's, uh, I think movie three is just, uh, it's the one, you know, it's it's got, 
it's got it all it's huge it's got it's got the most it's got the most <laughs> like uh it's you're got you're gonna love it i really think if you if you've if you've liked the first two you're gonna love three it's it's uh it's really really cool so uh, i i hope uh i hope you look forward and enjoy it all right. Well, thank you, Q, very, very much for coming. And thank you, Crystal, for co-hosting with me. And thank you, everybody in the audience, for coming. Please give them a big round of applause and look forward to Sonic Movie 3 in December. Woohoo! Thanks, everybody. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thank you for coming. Thanks. Bye, thank you. Bye. All right, guys, stay tuned. Uh, we will be taking an hour break, and then we'll be back in about an hour or so for the next panel so stay with us we will be playing some music on twitch in the meantime so go listen on twitch and enjoy <laughs>